So I have decided that I'm gonna do something kind of wild. I'm gonna build a game that exists solely in NeoVim, but here's the deal. It will be purely rendered on a server. Let me kind of explain how we got to this idea. So one day I decided I wanted to make a tower defense, and this tower defense is gonna involve chat on one side and, well, me on the other side. Every 10 seconds, you're able to make some sort of decision about your tower defense game. There's a lot more kind of rules to this, but for now, that's all you need to know. But I kind of hit a weird problem, which is the average Twitch chatter had about a five to six seconds delay in seeing my screen. That means if they can make a decision within 10 seconds, over half of them, more than half, the plurality and the majority will be making decisions on the previous turn. So I need a way for them to be able to see the game board at the same time that I see the game board, which means I had to build a sweet real-time system. So what we've built so far is going to be a Go server and a NeoVim client. Uh, now, here's the big kicker. I don't have HTTP, and I don't have WebSockets, so we establish a TCP connection between NeoVim and Go. And Go has the ability to have one thing being rendered and to send down partial frames down to NeoVim and actually have it render everything. So we created our own custom protocol. The protocol is going to be one byte to version, one byte to a command, one or two bytes to length. And then it's going to have data. Data is going to be obviously L bytes long. And each one of these is a frame. And I'm going to be able to take this information and actually be able to reconstruct and replay the game in real time to the user. Not only that, we built up a bunch of whole really nice like integration test suites. Actually, from Vim, I launch a built version of the Go server live on the spot. So if I have a syntax error, it'll actually inform me in Vim that I have a syntax error in my Go while trying to build the integration piece, then actually do all of the different tests against it, ensure it can actually render a bunch of different things, and then give it a thumbs up that, hey, this is a good looking server that you have built. And not only that, I support custom commands because I do want to actually consider making Vim Royale later on, and making Vim Royale will be the fundamental basis of this Go Vim real-time server business going on. So I'm pretty dang excited about all of this and so I just kind of wanted to give you a quick demo and then tell you what's coming up next so here's the demo what I'm going to do is I'm going to go like this Lua start and so here we go it's playing Conway's Game of Life in a completely different version of, of this exact same beautiful application but in a different terminal I do it again notice it's at the exact same frame I do it again same frame I do it again it's in the same frame. Notice that it's actually playing four different instances of NeoVim, all playing the same game of Conway's Game of Life at the same time. And that's really because there's actually a server running right here that is sending out all of this information to four different sockets. Now, this is absolutely fantastic, which this is going to allow me to be able to have 4,000 clients connected to a single server where we all play a game of tower defense together. But here's the best part. This is currently all in black and white, right? And so the future of this project, the next big hurdle I have to come up with is how do I send colors down to NeoVim? And so we've drawn on inspiration from something called HPAC. If you've never read about HPAC, it is incredible. HPAC allows like the dynamism of headers to be compacted in such a way that I could send you like two bytes and two bytes could represent the entirety of the header that I want to send which could be say 10 kilobytes it's a very very smart feature and we're going to be doing the exact same thing which is going to be some sort of dynamic compression and so this round or this kind of video is just like an update into where we've been which is really just making a very reliable and robust NeoVim experience for the TCP and for Go. I had a whole bunch of problems trying to get this, lots of skill issues, making this thing actually be resilient. But now we can really cycle through and add and drop a whole bunch of connections. I still am going to do some like Tiger Beetle style testing. If you don't know what Tiger Beetle is or Tiger style testing, a big part of it is going to be actual like live testing. And I'm going to have thousands of clients just sit there and hammer away at this Go server and ensure that we're able to have a continued and consistent experience between all x thousand clients and so that's kind of like on the horizon two really cool things and so yeah of course this is all going to be live on twitch if you want to catch it you know where to find it links down below and i might i must i i, I must say something i must say something um i wasn't expecting to like go as much as i have
Remember, this is the year of Go, 2024. I've kind of dedicated in my heart of hearts. I was going to do one year of Go and give it like a really strong effort and say, hey, do I like this language or is this really just too boring of a language for me to really like? And might I say, I've, I've actually had an, an incredible time playing around with Go. Building this little custom TCP protocol has been a lot of fun. Yeah, I probably would have liked it a bit more in Rust, uh, but all the other things involved in the lifetime of the connection, being able to notify other people of the connection, the ease of being able to write information into the connection is just unparalleled. And it's just, I'm, I'm shocked at how much I like it and the performance you get out of it. So you get like all the best of every world, which is like just a super easy language, followed by really, really, really decent performance given the fact that it's like, it's actually a garbage collected language. So ultra impressed so far with Go. And, and the thing that I think that I miss the most though, I really, you know, I want to say I love the, rice, the Rust type system, but sometimes I think, do I actually love the rice, Rust type system or am I just, am I just addicted to making complex types? I might be, it might be the latter. I might actually just be addicted and I can't help it. I just want to keep on type masturbating and I can't help it. So, so far, Loving my Go experience. Absolutely love building this project. This has been one of the funnest projects. It's just so super cool. Oh, dude, check, check this one out. Check this one out. Here, I'm going to cancel this thing. I'm going to jump back here. Watch this. If I run an integration test, we did this all today, by the way. I'm going to run this connection spec. I run it. Okay, good. It was nice. Check this out. I'm going to jump all the way to the front. I could have used control. I get it. Uh, if I like this, uh, level, uh, level equals debug. It will give me all of the information that I sent and everything about it, how the socket quit with an end of file, everything like that. Absolutely love the fact we've actually like set things up to be a good experience. I, I feel like we actually built a good platform here that's like really good production, almost production ready code. Absolutely happy about it. Can't wait to have 4,000 of you prove to me that you're actually not as smart as ChatGPT. You know what my favorite part is going to be? When we do this little thing right here and we do this little chat versus me is when I substitute me, put in put in ChatGPT or Gemini, and, and it ends up being that Gemini just destroys all of you guys. Oh, my goodness. You just wait. You just wait. Gemini is coming for you, okay? And so is Cloud and Devin and ChatGPT and, and Grok and that one weird open AI clone for that car sales online website, they're all, they're all going to destroy you. 